What is up, ladies and gentlemen? So today, we are going to be installing a very controversial piece. You know, you can read articles wherever you want. You're gonna find different answers, but the topic at hand today is catch cans. And more specifically, oil catch cans. <clears throat> so here we have what I am going to be running on my 2G. This is a three port sealed oil catch can. This is, well, it's a knockoff, but it's a Mishimoto uh, knockoff. And what it has, it's pretty a nice knockoff because it actually has internal baffling rather than, you know, the catch cans you see on eBay, which is literally just a box that has nothing in it. So let's open her up and see what she comes with. So as you can see, I believe this will hold up to 12 or 24 fluid ounces of oil. It's got an internal baffle right here to keep the oil inside and then a bronze filter to help um, separate um, the air from oil. So making sure that nothing but fresh air is going back into your motor. So what you have is two um, inlets, one out. So these two ports right here are going to be dumping oil into the catch can while this one port in the middle is going to be feeding your motor fresh air that is you know nothing but air and rather keeping the oil inside so why do you need this well oil vapors tend to um, increase uh, knock and detonation and so what you want in an ideal world is nothing but um, fresh air going into your motor when it's relieving crankcase pressure. And you'd be surprised how much crankcase pressure these 4G63s actually produce under boost. Um, I've seen people actually put a boost gauge on them and they're getting close to like maybe 4 to 5 PSI. And it gets worse as your motor ages. You're gonna get a lot more blow by and then you're gonna get, you know, smoky um, pulls when you're you know, up top and then your dips get dipstick can also pop off so all in all catch cans are highly recommended why did I go with a single one I used to run a dual setup but just um, for the simplicity of my setup right now and being that my motor is fairly fresh I do not have a lot of blow by but um, I still believe that running a catch can will be beneficial to me so this catch can comes with three ports. These are um, three NPT threads, three eighths NPT threads that would go in here. As such, so you have again your inlet, your outlet, and then you have a bracket that goes up here, and then two bolts that'll hold the bracket, and then two self-tapping screws that, so you can mount it wherever you want. Um, I do believe that sealed catch cans are better than vented catch cans. Um, again, very controversial. You can do your reading. It's a big, long topic. There's a perfect article. Um, you might have known him. His name is, I think, Kalen on DSM Tuners. He makes um, catch cans himself. All his catch cans are sealed units. They all come with internal baffling like such and he also has like a filter to make sure that whatever is going back into the motor is actually fresh air and not oil. So I will be running this sealed unit and I will show you how I'm going to be running it. So enough talking about this. Let's go to the car, uh, show you how our stock PVC system works and what you'll need to do to uh, install this bad boy. So here we are with the stock 4G63 PVC system. It's actually a pretty um, good and complex system, but shortened, we have a PVC valve right here. <clears throat> this thing, or its job, is when during idle it is closed, I mean open, and it's actually letting, um, you know, any crankcase pressure into the intake manifold because this is not seeing pressure at idle. So right now, or 
if this car was on at idle any crankcase pressure would be going inside the intake manifold into here and you know being sucked up by the vacuum that this creates during idle however when you get into boost this sees positive pressure so think about that if this is seeing up to 30 psi it's going to be pushing 30 psi of pressure this way and in, into the crankcase so that's bad so you don't want that so what this does to prevent it is that when it sees boost there's a little ball in here it closes and shuts this valve so that no no um that or no um positive pressure can get pushed in to the motor making you know your crank crank case pressure even worse so that's how that works then but you you know you're still being you're still creating crank case pressure during boost so how does that get resolved so this is why you have two sources of relief this one is for boost so think about it now you need a you need a source of vacuum to be pulling out this crank case pressure so where what is pulling air during boost? Of course, that's the turbo. So you have a line going into the intake right here. And during, you know, boost, it's going to be pulling, you know, however many PSI um, the turbo makes. So in my case, um, it's going to be pulling 30 PSI or just what I'm trying to say, it's going to be pulling vacuum from here all the way into there. Now, that's okay all in dandy if you have like a fresh motor where everything's you know perfect but again like i said if this was an old motor or you had your tolerances loose where blow by can get you know oil can get by you're going to be sucking all that extra oil from the motor into your turbo and that's going to get spread to your intercooler piping and all that nonsense so that's our stock system explained you know in layman's term now what i'm going to do is since I only want to run one because my motor is fresh and I do not have a lot of blow by I am going to delete this hose so that means I'm gonna block off the intake port which is down there you'll follow the hose I'm just gonna like put this hose with like a bolt in it or something just cap that off so that won't be you know pushing pressure into here I'm gonna get this line run it to the catch can and then get this line run it to the catch can as well and then the outlet where all the fresh air it's going to be going into this intake so that means i'm going to have two areas of relief however still have one um, vacuum source that's going to be actually pulling um crankcase any excess crankcase pressure so that's what i'm going to be doing and then why you don't want to be running ventilated um catch cans is that just think about all that positive pressure that's getting pushed out in from these two lines to your catch can if it's vented that's just gonna be sprayed out through here so I guess if you want a self lubricating engine bay go that way but that's why we run sealed catch cans so let's go ahead and get all this taken apart and you know get the new catch can installed all right now we are disassembling the stock system as you can see I remove the hose from here I remove the PVC valve from here the intake manifold port I've actually capped off with a nice titanium bolt so that won't be leaking any air anymore we just tuck that away like nothing up oh, nothing ever happened okay so now let's also go into some more explaining um if you run a catch can um, they suggest actually this is the stock PVC valve as you can see you can probably hear it. it's got a ball in here so this is probably not gonna be good for my health but anyways let's show you what it does so this is on the valve cover right here and this is facing the intake manifold so during idle it's pushing air out that way so as you can see I can suck on it <laughs> and air is coming through but during boost it's going to want to, the intake manifold creates pressure, so it's going to want to push air this way. And as you can see, it closes. So nothing gets, you know, through. That's on the stock system. So we no longer need this. We are actually, they suggest drilling this out and, you know, making it, so you can, making a better ventilation system. So what they want you to do is drill that out so they get the ball out, you know, so you can breathe better. However, 
I learned a trick. If you have any parked cars or go to the junkyard, this right here on the brake booster, this brake booster to the intake manifold, that fitting actually is a perfect fit. And here it is, I have one extra. I grinded it down a bit because the hose that I have is, uh, it's too small, so, but you can get the hose that fits this correctly. However, this is perfect. This is a through and through, you know, no restrictions. Way bigger than the stock PVC valve, as you can see. And this is going to replace that. So this is gonna be put right here in this position. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll get going. Now that is done, we got a nice ventilation system coming through there and here. So these are gonna be our vents now. For the catch can, I found that it fits perfectly right here, so what I did with the self-tapping screws, made two holes for the bracket. That's gonna sit right there. And the catch can's gonna go right under here. So let me go ahead and mount this up and uh, get, go, get going from there. And now we have the catch can mounted. Nice and sturdy, it ain't going nowhere. So remember, import I mean <laughs> imports these two ports are in this port is out so this guy is going to be feeding him this guy is going to be feeding him and then vacuum is going to be being pulled from the middle one into the intake manifold on I mean, intake right here by the turbo so let's go to all this route it up with some hoses and finish this video up bada beam bada boom there you have it. One legit slash cheap slash functional slash two budget tuner approved catch can setup. As you can see, remember we got our two ends. So we got one being fed from the top valve of the valve cover going into this port. And then we got the other one from the side of the valve cover going into this port. And then the out port where all the fresh air is gonna be middle going into the intake. So that's how I run my catch can setup. And I think it actually looks pretty nice. Nice and sturdy, kinda looks OEM-ish. I like it. So I'm gonna leave the link down below where it explains everything I just told you, but in more detail and more depth. And he also gives variations of catch can so you can run, you know, a single like I'm doing, you can run a dual. You can run, uh, there's like more air ports, more vent ports and stuff like that. He, he makes them all his own. I just went with this one because it was 50 bucks. It's effective. It's got the baffling, it's got the filter and it's got, um, you know, the three ports so I can, you know, just run one instead of two. It's cheap, functional and effective. That's why I went this route. I forgot to mention why I actually went with this catch can. Um, in order to run, run one catch can properly and functionally, you need three ports. So you need one, two ports to get you know these two, and then one port to actually create um, the vacuum. So that's why I went with this catch can. If not, and if you just had two ports, you would need two catch cans to do the same function that I'm doing with one. So you know you would have one in and one out, and then one in, one out. So, but in, when it has three ports, you can get away with just running one catch can to get these two outs and then one in. So that's pretty much, I'm done with this. So have a good one guys, keep boosting and I'll catch you on the next episode.